What's up everybody, Camero here, and welcome to part 14 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at HM items, or rather, how to change HMs into items. First, what we're going to do is download a script created by Marin that we'll be using today. Then afterwards, we're going to make our HM items. Then we're going to tweak the scripts a little bit, and then we're going to test all of our items in-game. With all that said, let's get into it. So... I said we were going to need to download our script, so we need to open up our internet browser and go to luka-sj.com. He has created a whole bunch of amazing resources, and Marin as well has created a bunch of amazing resources. So we need to scroll down here through the list until we find HM Items, which is right here. Created by Marin. What we want to do is we want to go to the download this pack button and click that. And I've actually already downloaded it. It's here in my downloads folder already. And we just want to open this up. So within here, let me close this WinRAR pop up. Within here is just script.txt. What we want to do is go and highlight all of this and copy it. Then go into our game's scripts and paste it near the bottom. I have these other scripts already installed and I'm just gonna insert and have this new one right down here. So we've already installed the HM items script. I'm gonna really quick name this HM items by Marin. There we go. So let's take a look at how it works. What it does is at the very top, it defines our items. We have a surf item, a rock smash item, a fly item, a strength item, and a cut item. You can see that in the comments that other um, HMs may be uh, covered later, but right now these are the five that we have. And we also have these switches. Surf item, or rather they are booleans, but anyway, surf item true, rock smash item true, fly item true. If you want to use the items, make sure that these are set to true. If instead you want to make it so that way the HM is usable, you want these to be set to false. So if you wanted a game with a surf item, but you didn't want a Rock Smash item and you wanted your Pokemon to instead learn Rock Smash, you would want to set this to false. Anyway, now we can see that these are the internal names of our items, so what we should do now is we should go create our items. So let's hit OK to this, and let's go into our game folder, and let's go to PBS, and then we want to go to items.txt. We have a whole bunch of items here already, but we need to add some more. Let's make a new line and let's start to finding a new item. I'm actually going to copy the shiny charm and paste it down here and then we're going to tweak it a little bit so it matches our let's make it surf item first. So instead of calling this shiny charm we need to call this surf item so that way it matches the name within the script. Let's go back and look at the script. So our surf item should be named surf item. Our rock smash item should be named rock smash item. And once again this is just for the internal name of them. We can actually name them something else. So let me show you. Our internal name of the item is Surf Item, but we could actually call this Surfboard if we want. I think that's a pretty good name. Makes sense. I mean, you could also give your player a boat if you wanted to call it something else. But we need to edit this a little bit. Instead of 006 at the end, we want these items to be usable, so we need to make this 206. Cool. And then we can change the description of this to just say a Surfboard. Bada boom. Now we need to do this for the rest of our HMs. So 5, 26, we'll have 27, 28, 29, and 30. Cool, so now let's start making those. So we have 5, 26 up there, 8, 9, and then 30. And let's make it so that way 27 can be, I guess, rock smash item. And then 28 could be cut item. 29 can be our fly item and last but not least 530 can be our strength item perfect so let's make it so our rock smashes item instead is like a pickaxe i think that'd be pretty cool we can call it pickaxes our cut item could be i don't know some sort of uh machete how about that so you can use that to cut down all of those trees those pesky trees Fly item, how about we call that a fly flute? I think that's kind of cool. You play it and then uh, fly across the world. And strength, we could have strength gloves. There you go. So we can push things around with our gloves. Or rather, strength glove and then strength gloves. Cool. And let's just um, edit these descriptions real quick. I'll just call this one rock smash. I'll just call this one 
cut. I'm gonna be pretty lazy with these descriptions. If you wanna be more creative with your descriptions, then you totally can. Right now I'm in tutorial mode, not, uh, not <laughs> writing mode. Anyway, we've created our items now, and now, naturally, we should create some icons for our items, shouldn't we? Well, get this, I actually already did that. I made some very bad art for my items in MS Paint, and you can download them, they'll be in the description, but you have to go to graphics, icons, and then we're gonna need items with our corresponding numbers. So 526, 27, 28, 29, 30. There we go, there's our surfboard, there's our pickaxe, there's our machete, there's our fly flute, and there's our power glove. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. Anyway, we have now created our items. Let's give ourselves events in game to get the item. What I've got here is a Pokeball that I made teal and it's just granting us a potion, but let's copy and paste this over here and let's make it so it gives us a surf item. Aha! Uh -huh. And then let's do the same for the rest of our items. One, two, three, four. So we can pick up our surf item. Here we can pick up, let's make it our rock smash item. I'm gonna try to do them in order. Let's make this our cut item. Although it's gonna be in reverse order now, so it's a little bit confusing, but Bear with me now. Cut item. Now let's make this our fly item. I should have called it a flightum. That'd be a, that'd be pretty clever. <laughs> and then we can call this strength item. And just to reiterate, if you wanted to ever change these internal names, that is accessible within the scripts here. This is what's determining the internal name for these items. So if instead you wanted the internal name to be surfboard, you would just change it here and then in your item make it so that way this is surfboard as well as long as this and this match then you'll be golden all right so now we've created all of our items and now we've created events that grant us our items but we're gonna run into a couple problems here i've already tested this before so naturally i i know what the problems are going to be so i'm not going to be surprised here but you'll be surprised to know that it's not gonna be working perfectly out of the box and we have to make some changes. Um, as well as, there's an additional problem. I'm so used to testing everything in debug mode. When you run the game out of RPG Maker, you're by default in debug mode. You can also tell you're in debug mode by pulling up the menu and seeing this debug option here, or by pressing F9. There's a, there's a number of ways that you can tell if you're in debug mode. Um, one of the major flaws of debug mode is you always have access to all HMs, always. So I don't even have the cut item in my inventory. Like I can pull up my bag right now. All I've got is a bunch of master balls. Yeah, in my key items, I don't have anything, but I can still interact with this tree and cut it down because I'm in debug mode. So we need to test this out of debug mode. Let's close our game. Let's go into our game folder, go to that root directory. We need to run game.exe. This is how you test the game outside of debug mode. However, you still need to make sure that all of your changes to the code compile, so you should probably run it first in debug mode, then close it, and then run it here from the executable, so we're not in debug mode anymore. So now, I don't have access to that debug in my menu. I still don't have my uh, cut item, if I open up my key items. And let's interact with this tree. Now, we can't cut it down. But, here's where we're gonna run into a bug that we need to fix via code. Check this out. Let me grab my, where is it? Cut item. Where are you, cut item? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think I'm picking all the ones around it, right? There you are, there's my machete. Cool, let's take a look at it in our bag real quick. Oh, these are beautiful. Cut. So you'd think that now that I have the item in my inventory, I should be able to cut this down, right? Oh, wrong actually. We need to make a change to our code. Let's go and do that now. So let's open up our script once again, and let's scroll all the way down to where the cut section is defined. It's right here at the very bottom. You'll notice here, def kernel pb cut. This is where it fails, or rather this is where it returns the failure result. It'll say, this tree looks like it can be cut down. Would you like to cut it if you've passed? But you will fail if you don't have the number of badges required for cut and you're not in debug. So. By playing the game in regular mode, not in debug mode, we are not in debug, 
And then we also don't have the badges. But wait a second, we have the item. We shouldn't even bother checking for the badges. So what we can do is we can actually delete this because we don't care about checking for the badges. Instead, we should do a check for if it's in our bag or not. And I've actually written this code on a, uh, on a notepad on the side so I can paste it in here now. But what we wanna do is say, if we don't have the cut item in our bag and we're not in debug, then we fail. So if we do have the cut item within our Pokemon bag, then we'll pass and be allowed to cut it down. So let's apply this change and let's test it in game. So once again, just to make sure you're clear on how this works, if we do not, so the exclamation mark is like for false or rather the inverse result. So if Pokemon bag has item cut item returns false, then we will not be able to cut down the tree. So let's apply this code change once again. Let us save our project and let's hit play here to make sure all of the code compiles. Cool, it appears to have compiled. Let's close this now and let's go back into our root folder and run game.exe now. And now we should see the update in our game. Here we go. I'm gonna try to cut down this tree, ha ha ha. Oh dang it, I don't happen to have a machete. I also have no Pokemon badges. I haven't beaten any members of the, the gym challenge. In fact, if I pull up my bag right now, you'll see I've got no badges, but I do have a machete. So let's interact with this tree once more. Oh my goodness, we now are given the prompt to cut it down. Because we have the machete within our Pokemon bag, we pass. So now we may cut the tree down with the machete. Yes, and now we can progress. So we need to make that same exact change for three more of those items. One of them we don't need to make the change for. That one would be the fly flute, or rather the fly item. Because flying is something that you can only do with the item in your bag anyway, then it's fine. It's so like these, for example, you would have to make the change because there's something interactable within the world. So let's go back to our scripts. And let's take this little bit here and let's copy it and tweak it for each of our exit like each of our other HMs, excuse me. So let's scroll on up here and see what the one above this is. Look, it's strength. And let's see where that failure is for the badges. Here it is. On line 231, we can copy this badge, or rather, highlight this badge requirement, delete it, and paste in our bit. But instead of checking for the cut item, this should check for our strength item. Perfect, so that'd be very interesting if we could push rocks around with a machete, but no, this way it'll only work if we are holding the strength item in our Pokemon bag. We can go and do the exact same thing for Rock Smash. Right here on line 204 is where it's making the check. See, we don't care about our badges once again. Instead, let's make it so that way if we have our Rock Smash item. Cool, scrolling on up again, this is where fly is handled, and we actually don't need to touch this. Scrolling on up once more, uh, here we go, here's surf. So here's the badge check on line 109. We can highlight this, delete it, and paste in our bit to tweak it for surf item. There we go. So let's save once again and run this, and we shouldn't have to make any more code changes now. The project has compiled, so once again I can close that, go and run the game.exe, and now all of our HM items should work. Let's test them all though, just to be extra, extra special certain, shall we? Let's pick up that machete first and foremost, and let's actually use it from the bag this time instead. Let's go in and use it. Whoa! It brings up the interact prompt for the tree, and then you can cut it down. Cool, so it also works when you use it from the bag. Let's get our pickaxe now, shall we? This is a boulder that looks like it's mighty fine for breaking with a pickaxe. Oh no, or rather, oh yes, haha, -ha, boulder down. Now we can also interact with it and break it with a pickaxe that way. I think that way's faster, but <laughs> whichever. Cool, and now let's try our surfboard out. Let's actually try using it on land first. What it does is it detects the tile in front of you, and if it's water, then you can use it. Otherwise, it says can't use that here, like it just did. Now let's go and use our surfboard now. The water is a deep blue. Yes. 
I like that song, but just to just to showcase it once again, let's interact with the water. Cool. So far, it's looking pretty good. The fly flute. I'll save the fly flute for last because I've been making some changes to the to the map. Anyway, I'm gonna interact with the strength boulder now with my strength glove. Would I like to push it? Yes, I would. Oh yeah. There's no sound effects for it, so it looks a little awkward, but that's fine. So, let's use our fly flute now. I actually have set fly locations on other parts of the map. So right now it doesn't work because I haven't explored the rest of the map. But I'm going to enable my speed toggle real quick. Run to the battle frontier over here. Then really quickly run over here to Sedolin City. There we go. I'm going to disable my speed toggle now. And I will activate the fly flute. And look at that. I can fly in between these locations that I've discovered. I'm gonna go to the Battle Frontier now. Fly Flute, yeah! And now I'm there, sweet. And just for good measure, I'm gonna fly right on back. Let me go to Sedolan City. All right, yeah, I made it, cool. So that about does it for this tutorial. Hopefully that helps you. Um, the flash HM isn't covered in this, but I think it wouldn't be too hard to add in if via a mod of sorts if you were interested in writing your own code. But uh, yeah, this is hopefully really helpful for you for cutting, rock smashing, surfing, flying, strength. Um, and thank you once again, Marin, for making this plugin. This is super helpful and super awesome. And hopefully you use HM items in your game because I hate taking up move slots for my Pokemon with HMs. Let me close this project really quick. Yeah, I hate HMs <laughs> when it comes to having to force somebody on my team to have a weak move. I like Surf because it's a strong move, but moves like Rock Smash and even Rock Climb to an extent. I don't know. I, I just don't really like HM moves and forcing them onto my Pokemon. So if you can add these to your game to alleviate that problem, I would greatly appreciate it. Anyway, um, thank you again for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to follow me on all the social stuff that's linked in the description, and uh, be sure to have a good one, you guys. Until next time, I hope that you all have a good one.